You're looking at a community in an area of land that is one of the largest land masses in the city that has the least resources. That is South Central Los Angeles. How can an area that is so historic and so important and so central to the core of our city be stripped of all the resources? We don't have social justice. We don't have food justice. Mm -hmm. You know, but we have injustice. Heart disease rates, the diabetes rates, the obesity rates, the cancer rates, they're all exponential. And when you're in the inner city, when you're in a food desert, it's through the roof. It's not the fact that we don't have food, but it's the actual type of food. It's like a cupboard full of poison. I just can't get my head around how our society can believe that we all don't deserve the right to at least have a basic form of life. Thousands of people on the street, starving. How are you going to feed them? I'm a street cook. Even before I was a street cook, I was a street person. I'm out there doing things whether it's approved or not. My whole existence in this world is to nourish and feed people. I want this show to be about the power of us as humans to come together again. Let's not make assumptions. Let's not make stereotypes. And from there, we can start to talk about these things and maybe understand each other. Whether your beliefs differ from mine, we're breaking bread. Los Angeles is a city of abundance. But not everyone gets to share the good fortune. And the picture is the same in low-income neighborhoods around the country. There's no access to healthy and nutritious food. Fast food and convenience stores don't count. Discount grocery stores selling low-grade food don't count. What counts is fresh fruits and vegetables that are accessible and affordable in every neighborhood, period. The most sacred thing outside of air we put into our body is food. A lot of our communities don't even know how much it can enrich their lives because they've never been exposed to it. Olympia Asset is the founder of supermarkets in South LA, an area where healthy food is hard to find. As a resident of South Central, dependent on public transportation, Olympia grew frustrated traveling far outside her community just to get the basic staples of a nutritious diet. She knew she wasn't alone, so she decided to do something about it. I already knew about what food deserts were, but it just got a lot more real when I was living here. About 23.5 million Americans live in a food desert. Yep. Particularly in South LA, there's 1.3 million residents mm -hmm. and just 60 grocery stores. Yep. As compared to, you know, on the west side, um, there's about 57 grocery stores for 600,000 people. So mm -hmm. it's like double the grocery stores. Like you're like, yeah. you're like falling over grocery yes, stores. Yes, you are. Like this is reality, right? Like when yeah. you say a food desert, right. people attach themselves to the word, but I don't even know if they really understand like the depth of what's going on. Like literally there's nowhere to eat. There's nowhere to get uh -huh. fresh food. So if you're in a neighborhood where the monopoly on establishments uh -huh. is, you know, just like fast food places and uh -huh. liquor stores, even if you're doing relatively well, that's what you're gonna eat. I mean, there's no produce, obviously. And you know, it's not really necessarily the liquor store's fault. They're not built to, they're not designed to. No, they know, shouldn't be the one. That has to bear the grunt. That has to bear the grunt, yeah. right? Good old ramen. Yeah. I mean, in a sense, there's nothing wrong with junk food, right? It's like cartoons. It's like a release. It shouldn't be like your normal life. The imbalance of it is the problem to mm -hmm. me, right? Like, if I'm eating really healthy or if I'm eating a really wholesome lifestyle and I decide to drink a two liter of Sunkist yeah. as a reward for myself or as just to wild out and have fun. Uh -huh. That's one thing. But if I'm drinking this every day because that's the only thing I have. Right. That's and a, it really has to difference. do with the imbalance and the availability because mm -hmm. why is this a dollar? Is this really a dollar? Like who, what subsidies are the sub, the soda companies getting, the corn farmers exactly. getting so that everything that's unhealthy is really cheap? That's Whereas really. Whereas pressed juice is $10, right? Exactly. So it's, it's yeah. really confusing. Like something that comes out of the ground should be really inexpensive. Mm -hmm. Something that it takes a lot of time to process should be mm -hmm. more expensive. But the issue is that the things that are less nutritionally dense are yeah. being made more easily available. We're not really in a situation where it's like there legitimately is a lack of food and there mm -hmm. legitimately is a lack of resources. There's a lack of pathways. I really wish like we could expose more people to like really good quality 
cooking and, and produce. And gardening and farming are mm -hmm. so important when yeah. you really start to get into like what's in the soil and why aren't we connected with our food anymore? Uh -huh. Like, why don't we know where it comes from? Why aren't we involved in making uh -huh. it? Los Angeles used to be farmland as far as the eye could see. But when the city was built, nearly every square inch of fertile soil was covered over in concrete. Most residents in LA have only a tiny patch of grass to call their own. Between the sidewalk and the curb, it's called a parkway. The city owns it, the homeowner maintains it, and there are laws governing it. When faced with the lack of food in his neighborhood, Ron Finley decided to grow his own in the parkway right in front of his home. Some didn't like it, but he started a revolution that would echo across the city and around the world. People don't realize the life they live in has been designed for them. These streets, these cities, cities are not made for people. Cities are made for commerce. If they were made for us, there would be a lot of green spaces. I mean, just think if you could walk down the street and just eat food off of a tree. The greatest nation in the world, supposedly, you have people dying in the street from hunger. There's no food problem. There's a food distribution problem. <laughs> There's plenty of food. There's more food than people can consume. Hey, this is a public television. Ain't no makeup or hair Whatever. out here. <laughs> you know, I've been dealing with that the whole time. Shiny forehead and everything. Whatever, Thanks for having baby. us again. Come on, man. Stop, thank you. Thank, stop, you, thank, thank you. you, Roy. This folklore, the myth and the lure of Ron Finley, the gangster gardener, planting dangerous sidewalk villain. He's going around and creating other gardeners and making gardening cool, especially amongst the youth. He's not producing food, per se, but he's producing food for thought. We're going to the world famous Parkway Garden. Kale, rosemary, this is an almond tree. And these, these are Japanese sweet potatoes. They gangster as hell. You can see the bananas. All of a sudden, I have people from around the world coming to visit us just because I put this garden out here. What this garden and all gardens represent to me, Roy, is freedom. Yeah. It, it ain't even, food comes later for me. <laughs> First of all, this frees you. I was going to get some food. Uh -huh. And I'm like, why the hell am I leaving out of my neighborhood yeah. to get food? With that, I'm like, damn, I need to have it here. But also, putting it here would make a statement to people to see the possibilities yeah. of this space. And the, so that's where it started. Is this, this the, is beginning? the beginning? So this was Bermuda grass. So this was weeds. Yeah. Everything looked like whatever, right? Everything Just looked like, like right across the street. Yeah, everything was this. E everything. If you look down the street, you see it. It's a weird kind of zone between yeah. yours and theirs and ours exactly. and, and, the, and nobody's. We here call them Parkway. I don't know. It's a debatable who owns them. As far as I'm concerned, if I got to maintain it, it's mine. This is filtering the air. It's giving us food. What does grass do? We're not cows, we can't eat that. So my thing is trying to show people to think wrong, to design the life that you want to live, not that one that's designed for you. I wanted people to realize what could actually happen on, yeah. on a strip of land. Just imagine if you had every other block that had gardens like this where they could feed each other, and that's what yeah. I want to do. You want to talk about economics. You want to talk about sharing yeah. economy. You want to talk about building community. What better way to, to do it than food? We aren't supposed to live like this. Our modern world traded nature for concrete and destroyed our soil and our soul in the process. Ron Finley is showing us another way. He is cutting through decades of urbanization to seed us some hope. It's to me, if you're a gardener and you're feeding people and you're cultivating soil, that's gangster. Mm. If you're building your community and not tearing it down, you're building something, that's gangster. If you're sharing. Folks that are on the ground doing stuff, that should be gangster. It, right? Exactly. Because that's, you are going against the what's the norm. Yep. Yeah, totally. All of the butterflies, the lizards, the bees, the June bugs, oh. all of that life you've just created in this little ecosystem, imagine if that ecosystem traveled Expanded. all throughout South Central Los Angeles. Exactly. And, and, it, then, and it's possible. That's the yeah. thing about it. We, we can build that. We can, mm -hmm. you know, we, we should be designing our own destiny like that. Just imagine if we thought about why does your father have this cancer and your aunt has another rare form of cancer and her brother has a cancer. Well, what about if we started to think and question all of these things and, and demand answers? And the people that we elected, they work for us. We don't work for them. 
Yeah. And we seem to have forgot about that. Yeah. You know, we are the many. And yeah. they are the few. That's true. I'm not a critical thinker. I need this plant moved. Let me see. I, I need a survey. I need a, 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 a seismologist. Why are you thinking about it? Guess what I've done? I've moved you've the moved plant. The, you've moved the plant. <laughs> yeah. And that's, in a sense, a metaphor for what we have to do with our cities and our right. access and our injustice, yeah. as you say, is that we have to stop analyzing it, and sometimes we just got to move the plant. Yep. No doubt. Move the plant. Stop thinking about it. When you're growing up, there's this idea that like, oh, like that's the white neighborhood, you know, like they have that over there, they don't have that over here. And so you grow up with this idea and it's normal your whole life. And it took me until I was an adult to say, well, why are we normalizing that something as simple as fresh food is not available where we live? These aren't things that should have a premium on them, you know? It's just regular, basic things that everybody pretty much needs to have a functioning neighborhood. You go to one neighborhood and it has it, and you go to another neighborhood and it doesn't have it, we have an issue that we need to address and that we need to fix. It's one thing to identify a problem, and one thing to agree that that problem exists and that we are going to do something about it, but then it's another thing to actually do something about it. And instead of just being around her own group of friends and saying, our neighborhood sucks, the corporations are killing us, she's just doing her part about it. What is this place? It's like the biggest organics warehouse in LA, so they supply a lot of the restaurants in the area. And this is where you pick up all your stuff for supermarket? A lot of our stuff. Okay. A lot of our stuff comes from here. This is kind of like my favorite part. This is the number two stuff. So this is the things that'll be normally discounted. Oh, okay. So you can get some really good stuff here. Look at some of these prices. Like this whole case is um, four bucks. So you can get- Four bucks, how much is a these case? These are organic. Normal. Maybe like 12. That's a big difference. You know what I mean? So, so okay. we're gonna pick up our order. Hello. I'm just here to pick up the order for a supermarket. Yeah, we got uh, mangoes, there's pineapples, Roman tomatoes, oh, sweet potatoes. Woo, these are some big Can sweet potatoes. So how much do you sell this for? So the price will range anywhere from like 75 to 125, depending on- For one. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. And I really just base it on like, what do I want to pay when I go in the grocery store? Yeah. What, what upsets me when I see a price that looks a certain way? I love that. To eat healthy today costs a lot, and some communities are made to believe they will never be able to afford it. Olympia is changing that, one delivery at a time. Yeah, we started this way with Kogi. We had a Scion, and uh, we used to come out here at Downtown Produce Market as well, and Restaurant Depot and all that stuff, and we'd be stacked full, we'd be hanging out the side. That's how we did it. Yeah, start small. It, everything starts small in many ways because the ideas that happen usually happen on the fly. You never get to see that part of the process most yeah. of the time. When people first sign up with us, we uh -huh. send them a message and we say, what do you like, what do you not like? So we get sort of input on like what they like to see in their boxes. Okay. Let me know if you want to customize anything. Let me know if you want to add anything. So this is everybody for this today. This is everybody for today. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. We have 15 boxes 15, to go. Yeah, yeah. That's great. That's 15 people that are going to have a wonderful week. Cool. So you want to do avocados? Let's do two, two avocados two in each one. Each. I mean, you could do three tomatoes in each one. And I'll do sweet potatoes. Let's see, let's see if you miss any, Roy. Uh, <laughs> I should be pretty good. <laughs> her operation is still small enough where she can see her philosophy and her point of view through all the way. And I'm excited to see how you continue that as you grow. What if this is 160 yeah, right. and 1600? What, right. what, we need have you nap. thought about your systems We're gonna need as a you grow? to be able to do and that. Nap. So okay. that's going to be the next step because we need them to be able to yeah. customize it on their own. I think by hand we could do like 50 on our yeah. own. That's what I think. Okay. You know, we'll find out. Have you ever reached that? Uh, no. What but if 50 comes next week? Next week? Yeah. We're just going to have to work it You're out. You're going to have to work it out. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm just asking. Yeah. yeah. For mm. me, there's nothing really to worry about. It's yeah. just like, just do the work as best as you can. Mm. And if it gets big, then it gets big. And, mm. you know, sometimes growth is a catalyst. Yeah. Like, it'll just push you to mm. be whoever you need to be. I don't get freaked out over that kind of stuff, you know? You'll figure it out. 
the single in the car. So what is it at its core? The supermarket is a grocery service, so we make it easy and affordable for people to eat well in areas where it's hard to get food. And we do that by having pop-ups where people can get produce, use their EBT. Hello. Hi. Welcome. Welcome to the supermarket. You want to get some cow? Yeah, just go ahead. Grab whatever you want. This is a beautiful thing you guys are doing. Yes. Thank you. Because it's hard out here yes. to get a healthy food, right? It's hard out here for a health yes. nut. Thank you so much. Take nice to meet you. Okay. You too. Always. Olympia is just beginning her journey of feeding and nourishing people. I got two beef dogs. Hey, Curly, got your mustard relish? Gotcha. Earl's, on the other hand, has been doing it for almost three decades. Chili and cheese, for here to go. You got it. What started as a hot dog cart by brothers Carrie and Dwayne Earl has become a staple in South Central for vegan, vegetarian, and meat eaters alike. I describe Earl's as having one of the most eclectic, diverse, beneficial menus you can find. There's nothing stereotypical about this restaurant. We come different. Hot dogs is our specialty. It's minority owned, minority operated, but you will not get the typical minority style, whatever you would expect. What are we doing, wrapping them up or leave them open? We have an extensive vegan menu. This is the vegan dog, vegan cheese on a wheat bun. It's tradition with us. What about the turkey dog? This community has followed us from our hot dog cart to our first brick and mortar to our second brick and mortar, and now to our final location. You were messing with me at the hot dog cart? Yeah. So you got about 22, 24, 25? Yeah. Before the riots? Yeah. That was 92, so you got over 25 years with me. Those nails are on fleek. Let me see them. None of my chefs said anything about it. We give you the Rolls Royce of hot dogs over here. <laughs> no peppuccinis, no jalapenos, none of that? Hey, I got an extra $100 lotto ticket. Can I put it on top? No, you said nothing else. <laughs> That's right. I come from a generation where they talked about entrepreneurs, and they always showed a picture of the young kids selling lemonade for five cents in front of the house. We continue that tradition. So when you think of that lemonade stand, you think of the hot dog cart the way we started. And we didn't just build a hot dog cart. My brother built it with his bare hands. You don't need a college degree to have an idea. You don't need a college degree to want to go out and do something. You just got to go out and do it. It's great. Oh, good to see you, right? Thanks for having us. Hey. Hey, hey. Thanks for having me here. What's up, what's up, what's up? I definitely want to try a New York dog. We're going to do that. I got my New York dog ready for you. I got a beef link ready for you. I got a chicken link ready for you. I'm going to even put my vegan burger up there just to let you know. Yeah, all that, all that. That's huge. All that. All that. Carlos Sinelli uh, over here. Right. Earl's is a mainstay and a symbol of perseverance for South Central Los Angeles. They've never stopped serving, listening, and evolving with the needs of the community. That's what I call a legacy. And that's the vegan burger. Uh, most of the big problems in our community is our bad choices of eating. This community slowly started changing, talking, you know, hey, what about the healthy options? Do you have any veggie items, vegan items? You know, and um, slowly and slowly we started adding them. What we're trying to do with a lot of the food that we have is we're slowly trying to cut out nitrates. We're slowly trying to cut out the sodium. It's a weaning off process. Yeah. I just can't do it overnight. Like, why is it something that's important to you guys? Is it something that's important to the community? To the community. There's a lot of customers in the black community that suffer from high blood pressure. Yeah. And we love salt. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to take everything that we have, uh -huh. have everything custom made for us, like the links, and yeah. slowly pull the nitrates out and the sodium. Make it healthy. I mean, the, the facts line up. I mean, we have so many people from your generation dying. Yeah, for Dropping real. dead at 46 or 51. Every time, and a lot of them have high, high blood pressure, yeah. and it's all because of bad eating habits, yeah. you know? Is Earl's more than just a restaurant? Because there's no reason you need to make these choices of going vegan, of serving all fresh ingredients. Like, you could just run it as a business, but is it more than a business to you guys? What's so cool is that we had customers that literally started uh -huh. from the hot dog cart eating from us. They were eating the beef. Then okay. to see several years later, they've changed uh -huh. it to the turkey or the chicken. Yeah. And now we're in the final year, they're on vegan now. To follow us from a cart and to have changed your diet all yeah. the way through is, you know, I, I still, I'm still amazed at it. 50% of our clientele is vegan, vegetarian. The uh -huh. other half is meat eater. That, that's unprecedented. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just the fact that we're able to provide it and then to provide it in this neighborhood. I wanted to talk to you guys about black-owned businesses. 
and why there aren't more. Because we're now going into decades and decades where you have generations of families that will never own any property. They'll never own. It's a broken record. You it's know? a broken record, and it's bad in our community. It's, oh. it's such a great pride knowing that we've come oh. from a hot dog cart to where we are. Yeah. It's such a letdown knowing that we are one of 1% that saying. has come You're out one of, of here. One the problem is there's so many generations that have been rooted in the quick game or mm -hmm. the quick return. Yeah. Whereas a restaurant, as you know, I mean, you've been selling hot dogs since 1981, and it's about patience, perseverance, about the long game, you know? And if you are the 1% of 1% and you got all these kids and all these communities and all these families. You gotta reach back. You gotta reach back. You have to. You have to. And you gotta show them a successful person within their community that they can relate to. Right. You guys are an inspiration to me on how to run a business within the community. So I always look to you guys as a North Star. Not every business has to do this. Exactly. Earls listens, they bend. They're constantly fluid and morphing. Olympian Earls are fighting for the same cause, but have very different approaches. And there's room for that. What they have in common is that they are both focused on changing the narrative and the diet of the community. Good food changes lives. As a chef, I've seen it. I've been a part of it. But Olympia is taking the mission to the next level. She isn't just making fresh, healthy food available to her community. She's bringing it right to their front door. We're dropping a box off with Lupe, one Lupe. of our subscribers. She's been with us for about eight months. Eight months, OK. Lupe! Hi, Hi. Lupe. <laughs> Hi. OK, thanks. So we have some sweet potatoes, cilantro, mango, some apples, green onions. That's amazing. <laughs> I love the variety. Hi. Hi. This I'm is Eden. He's the one that eats all the fruit. <laughs> you like pineapples? No. Yes, you do. <laughs> he does mango. like a, a mango. <laughs> Look at that. Did you know you had Korean spices in your cupboard? <laughs> yeah, right. What do you do with all the stuff usually when so she drops it off? Usually the fruit, it goes all to my kid. He uh -huh. eats fruit, like he comes home and eats snacks. So he has something to munch on. Mm -hmm. And this, he's not a big fan of vegetables. I'm trying mm -hmm. to make him a big fan, mm -hmm. but I mostly eat all the vegetables okay. and stir fries. I bake a lot. So I try to incorporate a lot of vegetables, a lot of greens and like starches. So for me, my whole philosophy about cooking, about getting people to eat more vegetables and fruits is to like really like overpower them with like flavor bombs. So then that way, like if they eat something like that, they're That's like, legit. yeah, they won't even know if they're eating avocado, tomato, corn, kale, That's really good. green That's onion, really ginger, good. garlic, all this. You yeah. say that to your kid and he'll be like, no way. 2016 when I had pneumonia and I was chronically sick, so I was like m looking more into organic and non-GMO foods. Mm -hmm. And that's when I came across Olympia and I was like, we could get organic, it's like mm -hmm. affordable price. In my community where I live, like mm -hmm. I have either the option to go to swap meat or a super. Mm -hmm. It's almost like discouraging to try to be healthy. Yeah. And I also wanted like the same mm -hmm. um, health for my son. I want to be able to expand to all the hoods across America. Every hood in America should have, you know, access to this. Yeah. Like anyone can sell fruit and vegetables, but like what you're doing is you're building community, you're teaching health, you're healing, but at the same time you're making it affordable. So Lupe can buy it. So someone who comes up to your stand can buy it. And that to me was the big difference of what you're doing versus just providing organic vegetables. Throughout the day, learning more and more about her philosophy and her outlook and her vision, there's something about her energy that just radiates. There are many folks throughout history, and there will be many folks in the future that are confronted with the steering wheel of life, whether it's in justice, food, whatever the case may be, you're presented sometimes with that moment where you have to rise. I see it in her changing and affecting people's lives. She's going to blow up. The riddle is, how do we infuse humanity and caring into a system that rewards bulldozing over everything else? 
We're meeting people that are seeing the world in a very holistic way and showing us that we can all win. Olympia, Ron, Dwayne, and Carrie aren't taking the easy road. They're paving the way for all of us, allowing us to imagine a different world with a different future. They are beacons of hope. <laughs> <laughs>